Uh, hello, everyone. Um, firstly, thank you to the RCP, RCP and Gary for facilitating this event. It's been a fantastic two days and really appreciate the opportunity to be here and, and learn from you and also speak about our initiative. Uh, regrets from my uh, project lead and executive director, Nancy Katani, who was hoping to be here, but because of a conflict, wasn't able to attend. So I'm speaking on behalf of our larger project team and operational team and representing some of the work we've been doing to roll out community paramedicine in, in British Columbia. So my name is Daniel Sirvar, and I'm a senior business analyst with BC Emergency Health Services. I have no conflicts or affiliations to disclose. Uh, British Columbia, for those who may not know, is located on the west coast of Canada, bordered, or bordered by the ocean, and then up in the north, uh, pro proximity to Alaska, and, and uh, Northwest Territories. To the east, we have our friends in Alberta, and just south of us is Washington State. British Columbia is a, a, a large province with a very diverse landscape with rural, rural remote, and urban geography. It's about over 440, four, it's over 944,000 square kilometers, population of about 4.7 million, and 59% of the population resides in the lower mainland, and that's the area just surrounding Vancouver. So uh, to keep in mind, the lower mainland area has about 16 of the 30 most populated municipalities. So we have a huge disparity in terms of uh, population location and then uh, rural, rural remote geography. So I think one of the other presenters mentioned it as well, but when we compare BC to the United Kingdom, you kind of get a sense of the extent of territory that we, we serve. And so I think some of our colleagues in, in uh, Australia can relate to that that challenge of coordinating and recognizing the nuances of geography and community. But as an agency, uh, BC Emergency Health Services is composed of the BC Ambulance Service and the BC Patient Transfer Network. The Ambulance Service is our EMS response and providers on the ground, and then the BC, Transfer, uh, BC Patient Transfer Network is a coordination of inter-facility transfers. We have um, 3,600 3, uh, providers uh, primary care paramedics, advanced care paramedics, infant transport teams, and critical care paramedics. We do about 446,000 pre-hospital events a, a year and about 96,000 inter-facility transfers. Uh, we have three communication centers, one in Vancouver Island, one in Vancouver, and one in the interior. We have about 585 vehicles. That's a combination of ambulances, support vehicles, and some primary response units or single responder type SUV vehicles. And we have 187 stations across the province. So BC's health context is quite similar to, I think, what's happening across Canada and I think in the US and, and uh, Australia and the UK. Uh, we're really in a sense of we're negotiating an aging population. There's an e increased demand for services. And there's challenges with rural remote access to health care. Now we see a need to respond to the and meet the triple aim and the quadruple aim. I saw the quadruple aim referenced earlier, but for us that references the provider experience. So uh, patient experience, health of populations, reduced cost per capita, and then the provider experience. And then also commitments to transform and integrate health. So commitments from our ministry and from our leadership to look at how are we going to evolve and keep up with the increasing demand. So that's really a challenge us to think differently and make use of some of the skilled providers and leaders in healthcare we have and in public safety in a different way. So our, our community, paramed is, uh, our community paramed medicine initiative is province-wide. We just announced 73 rural and remote communities and we're gonna have community paramedics delivering care within the existing primary care paramedic scope with an IV endorsement. They're gonna be attending to patients in scheduled appointments who are stable. Here's a list of all the stakeholders involved in this process and the development of this project. We have our regional health authorities, our First Nations Health, our union partners at, at QP873, uh, the BC uh, Union of Municipalities, and the Rural Coordination of, uh, Center for BC. I think it's been echoed in some of the presentations earlier, talking about the collaboration and teamwork, kind of from the ground up. So this new work, this new avenue, this new context, Although we're leveraging demonstrated and agreed upon skills and abilities, how are we going to 
build partnerships that are conducive to, to success and facilitate ongoing connection and collaboration. You know, coordinated approaches to care that kind of tra translate or transverse these old boundaries. So the two goals of our project are to bridge health service delivery gaps identified in collaboration with local primary care teams. So we focused on four um, disease types or four disease processes, uh, CHF, COPD, hypertension, and diabetes, and one risk factor as it falls for patients over the age of 65. And the second objective of our project is to contribute to paramedic staffing, stabilization of paramedic staffing in rural and remote communities. What does that mean? Well, in our province, a lot of our rural communities have a kilo stations or a kilo ambulance presence. And for our agency, that's uh, paramedics on pager. So they carry a pager, but they go about their lives or perhaps other jobs. And when an event happens in their community, they respond. So looking at that, we recognize that there's an opportunity to strengthen our presence in those communities, but also do it in a way that's relevant. And so a lot of these communities have paramedic presence that's based on or evolved from the old volunteer model. So they're doing that work in their community because they want to support their community. So any solutions or engagement we do with them has to come back to that need. Give them, give them an opportunity to support their community and folks um, that they're committed to and care about. So our planning and readiness process has been extensive, but we've really benefited from, I think I've, I or our project team has connected with many of you already about the process for facilitating this kind of change. And I think learning from some of those steps has really helped make our steps more sure-footed, uh, understanding regulatory change and the framework in which we work in and the restrictions that are there, and championing an ability to work in this new context. So in British Columbia, we're governed by the BC Health Emergency Act and the BC Medical Assistance Regulations. Those outline the context of emergency work or inter-facility work and the specific tasks and drugs uh, that we're allowed to perform and activities we're allowed to do. And so it was through a ministerial order, uh, the argument and um, permission was allowed to translate these skills with some orientation and context to a community setting. Working through with the union an agreement about how we hope to go forward with this initiative and what would, lo what would that look like. Developing privacy impact assessments, understanding how our plan and approach to securing patient information in the most appropriate way in accordance with uh, federal and provincial law. Identifying which communities, which of those rural communities where we had a kilo presence were we going to uh, engage with first. Orientation, leveraging our relationship with the Justice Institute, which, which is our education partner, to develop that needed training and context. And then our oversight model, how does that evolve and support our paramedics in this community paramedic role? And then developing appropriate practice support, clinical guidelines, protocols, resources and engagement that built on that momentum that we've seen in other jurisdictions. And then developing our connection with a dispatch, so a field communications guide. In our environment, we're going to have community paramedics that are, that are plugged into the dispatch system and responding to specific types of emergency events. There's some quantifiers, so we'll have to be not already engaged, and we're so saving them as units for the most acute, so our echo level calls. And then building an evaluation framework, an evaluation approach, so we can really get an assessment of how well we've done and whether or not we've met our objectives. So we began this process by deploying uh, prototypes. So we have community paramedics and prototype communities in each of the regions in which we work. And those regions are governed around health authorities. So some of the most rural stations in the north, Chetwin, Fort St. James, Hazleton, and the interior, bordering Alberta, Creston and Princeton, and then Vancouver Island, Cortez Island, Port Hardy, and then the communities of Tofino and Euclid have been put together. The benefit of that is that we had community paramedics on the ground building relationships, working through with our partners about how we could learn and evolve this process. And now that they've been doing that work for some time, they transition to a role of supporting those par community paramedics will be hiring and working in those communities. So an invaluable resource that from a project perspective, we couldn't replicate the work and experience of paramedics on the ground, community paramedics on the ground, what they're seeing, what the gaps are, how do we build relationships and get them plugged in and integrated with the community health care teams. So our community, se community selection model was quite dynamic in the sense of we had to get a sense of not only where we were present, what was defined as rural and remote, but what was it like in the business? 
kind of calls do we do, what kind of issues are already present, and then also what are the needs of the patients in those areas. So getting together that information, some of the public health pre incidents and prevalence data, what our call response like history was, and taking that to the operational folks and paramedics to get a sense of, does this resonate? Have we missed anything else? What else should we consider? And then engaging our stakeholders, our health authority partners, our referring parties, to get a sense of what their inputs were and what their understanding of those needs. If, you, if we go back to our objectives, the first objective is, is highlighted around identifying gaps and filling gaps in collaboration. So making sure there was resonance on what the issues were and what the approaches were and priority. And then also selecting the communities, which we've done, and determining what kind of resource placement, placement or composition of CPs were we gonna have there. And because of the extent and the size of our project, 73 communities, we've approached it with a phase rollout. So breaking the province down into pieces and understanding a rollout to that so we could not only learn and adapt as we move forward, but making it um, tangible and concrete for our partners when they can expect to work with us and when the next phase will happen. We've also put in uh, our multi-year project cycle an optimization phase where we can take a look at all of our deployment and get a sense of is there, is there an opportunity to enhance or revise some of our approaches and, and adjust. So the chart above you shows you when we're posting uh, positions for each of those communities. Those will be followed with an orientation period and then a field orientation period as well. So we're looking at about a month period between uh, start to uh, on the ground. And then the evaluation. So we developed an evaluation framework uh, to support our initiative and our project cycle. And so we're looking to analyze and, and make analyze and make sense of the changes and impact that we're having in, through, our, through our service provision, using evidence and data as much as possible uh, so that we can inform policy and practice changes. And then also identify lessons learned or things we hadn't contemplated initially. So really using an opal, open cycle of impu improvement, PDSA, but tangibly leveraging data and insight to kind of ground our, uh, our learning and, and uh, perspective. So our evaluation approach started with recruiting an evaluation expertise or a consultancy who could kind of guide us through this formalized process and then leveraging our internal capacity to kind of do this work going forward, but making sure we started in a grounded and, and appropriate sense. And then we established an advisory committee, pulling in representatives from all of our stakeholder groups and paramedic groups and allied health to make sure that we have a, a round, and patients as well, to make sure we have a rounded uh, sense of what's happening and what the needs are and working through that piece. And so with our evaluation specifically, making sure that what we're looking for in terms of performance measuring and KPIs, or key performance indicators, resonated. And then developing the tangible uh, nuts and bolts of the framework. So how are we gonna go through? What, were, what was our theory of change? Uh, if we do this, what kind of impact will we have? High level evaluation questions that we want answered. A logic model for flow, and then data collection matrix and KPIs. So the engine of how we're going to pull in the clinical data, the dispatch data, and have a sense of our impact. And then recognizing that although the evaluation is specific to the community paramedic work, we're still accountable to our business for uh, the EMS side. So those calls we will respond to and the presence we're gonna have in the community. So that duality needs to be uh, represented and accounted for. And then once the evaluation cycle ends, we're still gonna continue to look at this information. So making sure that's all in alignment. Uh, I initially had planned to leave a few uh, comments for questions, and I know we haven't done that prior, but does anyone have any questions for me? 